This presentation will look all about the Holdness coastline and specifically about the management strategies used. This 85 km stretch of coast is famous due to its rapid erosion rate of around 2 metres a year, but in some parts it's up to 10 metres a year lost, due in part to how we have managed the coastline. The Government Environmental Agency is in charge of how we actually manage the coastline. They create what's known as a detailed SMP. Do you know what this means? A shoreline management plan has been created on how the coastline will be managed in the next 20 years and which strategies should be taken for each part of the coastline. The key choices can be remembered by the acronym HARD. We'll ignore Advanced the Line and Managed Retreat today because they are not part of the Holderness Shoreline Management Plan. Pause the show and ensure you know all about shoreline management plans and the hard options as I've shown there that they can take before moving on. This distinctive UK landscape stretches 85 kilometres. It's located in East Yorkshire by the North Sea stretching from the slowly eroding chalk headland of Flamborough Head right down south towards the unique Spam Point Spit. Coastal erosion is nothing new here, with over 23 villages lost to the sea since the Roman times when the coast was a further 5 kilometres out to sea. This is due mainly to the land being a very soft sedimentary boulder clay which is ex exceptionally easy to break apart. This geology coupled with very narrow beaches means during high tide the base of the cliff is pounded by hydraulic action and abrasion. Any loose material is also moved along the coast through longshore drift rather than being deposited and built up. Another important key factor is the effects of climate change. As water temperatures increase, thermal expansion occurs, increasing the height of the North Sea. Furthermore, climate change has brought more storms, which also increases damage to the coast. Pause the show and ensure you know all about the background behind the Holderness coastline before moving on. Bridlington is the largest Victorian seaside resort along the Holderness coast. Today, it has a population of 35,000 permanent residents, though a lot, lot more people come and stay for a holiday in the summer. Due to its size and the number of homes and businesses there, the Environmental Agency used the Hold the Line strategy, and have done so for many years, with a 3.6 km seawall being used as the main line of defence, alongside the use of groins to help build up the beach. Along parts of the exposed seawall, rocks are being placed at the base of the seawall as well to add further protection known as rock armour. These hard engineered sea defences have proved effective in protecting Bridlington over the years. Money though will have to be spent every few years upgrading them, but these defences have worked. Pause the show and write down some notes about the whole of the line strategy in Bridlington. Withensee is a small seaside town of 6,000 people with over 2 kilometres of hard engineered sea defences by it. These include concrete sea walls, timber groins and rock armour. The Hold the Line strategy has been chosen since the 1870s for this stretch of coastline. The sea wall has recently been replaced by a 6.3 million recurved sea wall, which helps reflect the wave's energy back out to sea from its top. Rock armour has had to be placed along the southern sea defences to further protect the area from erosion due to the groins trapping sediment to build up beaches around the town. The whole of the line strategy is very costly, but it's working here. However, after the last sea defence was built, further south there is an awful lot more erosion taking place. Pause the show and note down the effectiveness of this management strategy for Withensea. Mappleton is a very small village with just 50 houses 3 kilometres south of Hornsey town. It has managed to be granted a hold the line strategy since 1990 due to the B1242 road, needing to be protected because it links all the villages together in this area. Coastal defences have been effective in reducing erosion between the two rock grounds, however it has come at a great cost further south where the rate of erosion has increased a lot through greater slumping of the cliffs. Pause the show and note down how the Hold the Line strategy is very effective at protecting this very small village, but not without a cost further downstream. Along most of the Holderness coastline, the Shoreline Management Protection Plan 
uses the strategy of doing nothing. This simply allows nature to take its course without any intervention. A lot of the land on the Holderness coast is arable farmland. Although this is a, will be a loss to farmers, it's nothing compared to the cost of having to uproot and displace whole settlements. It's hoped that by doing nothing, it may actually slow down overall rates of erosion by allowing the sea's energy to be spread more evenly. Any eroded material will be moved by longshore drift to build up Spurn Point. The do nothing strategy is the cheapest and most effective by far, since it's not realistic to protect the whole coastline from the sea's erosive powers. Pause the show and ensure you understand the benefits of this strategy. Skipsea is a very small village of about 700 residents situated 16 kilometres south of the very heavily protected Bridlington. Apart from a few houses, tourist shops and a static oral depart, little is there. Erosion rates here are up to 4 metres a year, with sea defences placed upstream causing this to increase. The shoreline management plan has decided that it's simply not sustainable to build sea defences everywhere, and skip sea is going to be sacrificed to the sea. Sea defences are based on a cost-benefit analysis, with large urban areas and important industries protected over farmland and individual houses. On that basis, Skipsy will eventually be lost to the sea. The hollow depart will be salvaged and moved inland, however 24 houses will be lost within the next 10 years. These houses will not be allowed to fall into the sea, so the owners will actually have to pay to get them dismantled. The Skipsy rate of erosion would not be this quick had defences not been upgraded at Bridlington as part of the shoreline management plan. Pause the show and make sure no, you have got some notes about the future of Skipsy. Overall, the SP for the Holderness Coast has had mixed success. Quite simply, once one part of the coast is protected, it comes at the expense of somewhere else downstream. The current 10 km hard engineering schemes by the large settlements are working and holding their line. So the coastline is kept in place, which can be seen as a success. However, Climate change is going to make these defences even more costly to be upkept in the near future. Big decisions will need to be made as to which current settlements will be sacrificed into the sea. Other strategies such as managed retreat or temporary soft engineering may be required, though ultimately the sea will always win. Pause the show and note down the evaluation of existing SNP strategies for Holderness Coast. On the screen is a typical exam question which wants you to examine the coast and evaluate how well it has been managed. Has the shoreline management plan along the Holness coast worked or made things worse? Remember, always bug the question to make sure you know exactly what you are writing about. Because it's a case study question, you need to always name drop and mention seaside towns like Bridlington or Hornsey, Mapleton and Windsor, where hard engineering defences have been made. A top answer will mention the environmental agency, shoreline management plan, and weigh up the hold the line and do nothing strategies. Write about the successes of the management of the main settlement, but the major problems that have occurred with rapid erosion downstream before coming to an overall conclusion about how effective the SMP has been. Think back to the points made from the evaluation notes to help you. This concludes the assessment looking at the management of the Holderness Coast.